podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to the next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook and myself, Jackie Jones. And we're on to episode 178. Yeah, gosh. I know. Um, And what we're going to be talking about in this episode is individual or group therapy advantages and disadvantages. What a fascinating topic. And uh, I've done both. Yeah. And just off uh, camera, uh, Jack was saying to me that if you are on YouTube or where you can see see us, uh, uh, down the bottom, it says Stephanie Cook instead of Bob Cook, I think. Yeah, um, right. that's because, yeah, that's because I'm on my wife's computer. And therefore, so... You know, it's Bob Cook and not Stephanie Cook, but I just wanted to in case some of you eagle eyed people were thinking about that. That's the reason why, because I borrowed her computer. You did. It was either that or your phone, and we thought borrowing a computer would be better. <laughs> Technical <laughs> problems. This is what you have when you're recording podcasts, Bob. Oh, I know. I know. Anyway, so this subject area is really interesting advantages and disadvantages of um, individual and group psychotherapy and yeah. I, you were just saying you've had both is that I've right had both. i had individual and i've also had group yes oh right so you've done both and what's your thoughts on this um i think one of the disadvantages of group therapy was it allowed me to hide somewhat one of the disadvantages is group therapy and when you say group therapy, how many people in the group there was four for two hours yes yeah so with four people it gave you the more opportunity to um withdraw perhaps or yeah. hide or whatever the ways but having said that even though i was hiding i was getting something from the process listening to other people under oh, so the, i was like for, for vicarious therapy absolutely yeah but I, I was i could withdraw and not talk about my issues in in a group whereas if it's individual there's just silence unless you're talking <laughs> which true. is another de- that's the disadvantage to individual is i don't like silence <clears throat> it's very uncomfortable so yeah yeah i mean it's not a practical advantage and disadvantages for example i mean you know when i ran groups and i ran groups for 36 years weekly weekly a lot uh, sometimes i ran two three groups a week um but all my groups would have a until the last four or five years before i retired they had eight people in a group yeah double four and they had two hours and in terms of practical advantages of course it's cheaper yes yeah i'll talk about the service or psychological benefit you know so it's quite often half the price yeah uh for two hours so on a practical level there's that um but i think that i mean i did individual therapy of course as well but i remember the way i began this whole process when i was a group psychotherapist and that was that i wouldn't invite people into my groups unless they'd done it probably at least three to six months with me individually yeah so that they had me as a constant positive object and had a relationship with me because once you move somebody into a group or once they go into a group um psychologically they have to share you yes yeah yeah and for some people that is a really big deal yeah i agree so that would be could turn out to be one of the you know somebody once said to me your greatest strengths no, strengths is your greatest weaknesses and your greatest weakness is your greatest strengths so it could be a gift of going through the perhaps issues around sharing which may or may or may not have had in terms of uh, childhood or psychological issues so they actually 
you know, it could be a gift to work through that, but it's also seen maybe in some courses a disadvantage in terms of you don't have the individual attention of one person. Yeah, yeah. I've I've never run a group. I do couples, but I've I've never run a group, so I can't talk about it from the therapist side. But did you do you feel that people open up just as much in a group as what they do if it's individual, or do you feel well, that they hold back? Well, I think whether you put this in advantages and disadvantages category, I don't know. But I think what happens is the people enact out their family histories in a group. Yeah. So, for example, my wife uh, was brought up with seven other people. Wow. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, and then also the mother and father as well. So that's nine, is it? Yeah. So, so her her issues would be very different in many ways, or some of the issues might be very different, say from an only child experience. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I think what happens is the people. It will enact out in into the group <clears throat> their family challenges or their family familiarities or, or or whatever you want to look at this onto the group. And so for some people, being in a group may be familiar at one level because they say, like my wife had seven or eight uh, brothers and sisters. And so um that's familiar it's predictable they know how to be but on the other hand if that family from childhood was dysfunctional then they may feel you know they might put onto the the group for example um a dysfunctional system which actually comes from their childhood not the present one so you know, we can see advantages there straight away because they go into a healthy scenario or a different scenario from that dysfunctional system as a home. So, you know, but you have to get there in the first place. You need to have a, I believe, a um, relationship with the therapist first so that process can be held. Because if you haven't got at least the relationship with the therapist <clears throat> and can hold what can hold them, then a group might be quite difficult. Yeah, I would imagine it is. You, you, that's why <coughs> you have eight people in a room that you're monitoring and, you know, I don't know, looking for reactions or changes in them or, or whatever it is and trying to bring them into conversations or whatever. It's a bloody exhausting experience for the therapist. And two hours of it. I think it's different from, say, the well, in, yes, in the way that you've just talked about all those group dynamics, that's different for in terms for the therapist to think about. And I would imagine as well, there has to be some sort of a selective process as to who will be okay in a room with who, is there? Um, for me, it was more about levels of disturbance. Okay. I mean, there was obviously practical things around... You wouldn't have, you know, family members in a group, for example, yeah. or you wouldn't have, you know, this practical boundaries, obviously. But in terms of when those are put in place, uh, levels of disturbance. So <clears throat> if somebody is particularly disturbed in, in the high end of the continuum, let's say a personality disorder, then you wouldn't have somebody else, well, certainly no more than two, definitely. Uh, you wouldn't have two highly disturbed people in a group of eight people. I wouldn't. I wouldn't certainly wouldn't go above I wouldn't go to three. I might just I might just go to two personality disorders in a group, but I'd have to think very heavily about it. Um for lots of different reasons. But uh so I used to think about it it's more in terms of level of disturbance rather than the else. Yeah. I, I just, I, I don't, I just, it's not something I've ever really wanted to do, I think, because of, I don't know, the responsibility of having all those people in a room. <laughs> well, yes. Because you never know whether somebody's going to get triggered by something harmless that somebody else might say. Well, I hope they do. 
Well, yes, but then I suppose that is part of the therapeutic <laughs> process, isn't it? Yeah. So well, I think that's the good thing. That's a positive thing about groups is there's lots more things going on that, that, that the person can get triggered by and then follow then them. It's a trust issue that they let you know that they have been triggered rather than just internalising that and going out and not actually saying anything. Well, that's why I said I don't didn't take people into groups. And it was throughout my career, it was the same. Unless they had at least three to six months therapy with yeah. me individually. Yeah. So they were they were at able to 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 do what you're talking about now the other side of that is the therapist has had six months with the client as well so they've started to know a bit about the person's coping mechanisms and yeah. what's happening for them and what's not happening for them and then it's up to the therapist to initiate and say oh it's really interesting you seem to be a bit more withdrawn than usual there's something going on yeah so it works both ways when you when i said about at least six months individual work first with the client because the therapist knows the client's coping mechanisms as well as the therapist sorry the client trusts hopefully the uh, and is attached to the uh, therapist so some of the uh, one of the disadvantages of a group then could be conflict within the group uh, okay let's start i'm a great advocate of groups so too, I think, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I'm going to have to think of disadvantages in a group in a minute, but I don't think conflicts in a group is a particular disadvantage. I actually think it's an advantage because it will trigger off the challenges for the individual people having their conflicts, because if they having a conflict in the group, 10 to 1, the same aspects and processes are happening in their personal life. Right. And it's good for them to be able to sort it out in a safe environment and yeah, to maybe look at it from the other person's point of view and things. Absolutely, yeah. So that's that. But leading on to a disadvantage, which is linked into what we're saying here, if the person coming to the group has got enough, not enough, how can I put this here, has not enough robust, ad, robust adult ego state, yeah, yeah in other words, they don't stay in the here and now to the level that perhaps from a healthy perspective we're looking for. Yeah. Then they may find some of the things in groups extremely overwhelming for them and find the challenges of being in a group too difficult. Yeah. So the therapist really needs to think about as the person that we're talking about here got enough adults to be able to stay grounded in a group arena yeah i can remember being massively triggered in my group therapy session mm -hmm. but maybe, maybe that's good if you had the, a strong enough adult to be able to work it out with the therapist and i think the at the time i'm not sure that i did it was very personally it it just hit home with me so mm -hmm. On that actual session, I didn't. I didn't say anything. Um, yeah, that's and, where we have re-traumatization. Yeah, that's where the group therapist needs to think hard and fast about inviting somebody into a group who may get re-traumatized. But what I did do was come back the week after when I kind of processed it and realized, yeah, this is. This is my stuff that's triggering. It's not what they said. It's just because it's hit something in me. Then I was able to go back the week after, bring it up in the session, and mm. we spoke about it. And it, it, I just didn't think in that moment I could articulate what had even triggered me. Yeah. So, that, so therefore, the therapist who invited in the group obviously had enough, um, you know, thought process around a rob that you had a rob robust enough adult to be able yeah. to go away and reflect on things and having the uh, courage to come back and sort things out. Yeah. That would be a very hell should be, I don't know if it was from you, but it has the opportunity for great growth. Absolutely, it did. Yeah. And it's something that will stay with me all the time because I, I speak about being triggered a lot. I spoke about being triggered a lot. I thought I'd been triggered but that was a trigger of all triggers. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It just showed me how powerful 
they actually can be. You mean the the groups? You mean? Well, the, the groups and the actual being triggered. Oh, right. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes we say, "Oh, yeah, it's just something that I don't know affects me," but psychologically, when you're triggered, it it cuts deep. Oh, oh absolutely, and that's why you need a good therapist who yeah. can help you work things through yeah. uh, and uh, you can see that you might be overwhelmed or floundering and move in to initiate protection yeah which again you know it was quite late on in my training you know so none of us are infallible to any of this stuff do you know what i mean we, we <laughs> become aware of it but we still get caught up in it you're absolutely right and you know i think when i i was trained 1985 to I think 1990 when I did my clinical exams and then I went on to be an instructor and a teacher and everything else but back in the day if we talk about middle 80s there was many 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 psychotherapy groups but now in 2024 there's not many psychotherapy groups around so if I reflected on how come the demise I think the psychotherapy groups in the psychotherapeutic field I'm not so sure why, really, but certainly it might one of the things might be that there's not much group training actually included in a lot of psychotherapy training. But I think there's also a cultural shift um away, you know, uh, towards more individualism and um I think there's a cultural process going on. I do too. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, so if we go on the advantages of individual therapy. It would be, um, you know, shame's a big one. They, yes. If they've got a shame-based experience, then they might feel the need to have individual therapy um, rather than group therapy, or they might feel the need to have individual therapy and then consider perhaps going into a group as they start doing the healing around all the shame-based issues. Um, or they may just want to stay with the attachment of the one therapist where they feel they might be able to go into their th therapeutic issues in a much deeper, more intimate level than perhaps feeling they, you know, share want to share things in a group. So, I think what you said early on in this podcast is a really, really valid point about not wanting to share the therapist. Yeah. And I think for some people, that is a big deal. Very big. Yeah. Very big. Very big. It's probably one of the basic reasons why people want to have individual therapy rather yeah. than therapy. Um, and of course, as I've just said, you know, however you were brought, brought up, you were knocked out into a group. So if you think you've come from a big family, I can think of all the reasons for familiarity, predictability, all those things. You might find group therapy um, okay for you. But also on the other side, there's lots of issues in a big families um, around sharing, lack of space, feeling invaded, yeah. all those sort of things. So you might want to have what you haven't had most of your life, which is a special relationship with one person. When you did group therapy, did the group give feedback? Yes. Okay. So that's a big thing for people to take on board as well. You know, accountability yeah. and feedback and things in a sense. That's what I meant by vicarious learning. Yeah. And of course you have to teach people how to give feedback in terms of positive constructions. But um, yes, I always encourage people to um, talk about the impact of the sharing that's been happening in the therapy group. Yeah. Because that's it's valuable, it, you know, for, for people to know how they've been impacted with things, yeah. I I do think the therapist. This is another thing. Therapist needs to be quite experienced. Yes. I think they need to have training. Yes. Run groups. Yeah. Because if they're not run properly, I would imagine they can be. I don't want to say damaging. I feel like that's a too well, strong word. But traumatizing. They, yeah and many other things yeah there's definitely impact that can happen positive and negative in group therapy yeah i think that uh 
if there's not enough training in the four-year training groups on how to run psychotherapy groups, and there often aren't, I would encourage the therapists to get some CPD and some training in that. Now, I had the luxury that I went, I was in a group therapy for most of my psychotherapy training. So in other words, I had a very good model yes. already of what happens in a psychotherapy group and what a therapist does or doesn't do in a psychotherapy group. You know? yeah. Yeah. So that is about the best learning you can have, isn't it? Being Absolutely. in a weekly psychotherapy group for four years yourself, you've got a model, you've got um, you've taken on the significant of the, that's the therapist and how they run, don't run groups. You've been in it yourself. Um, I still think you need something more than just an apprentice style of training, which I think that's what that is. You need to go off and have some CBT, CBD about um, how to run psychotherapy groups. But I do think this being in a psychotherapy group for a long time gives you a very intrinsic model, which yeah. helps you perhaps if you then go on to run groups yourself. But again, like you said, earlier on you know the the training for groups is probably very sparse because there isn't like you said i i don't see you know if you go on the counseling directory or whatever mm. it's usually individual therapists there's not very pe many people like me not many people like me around i don't yeah, mean absolutely not. no yeah i've run groups for a very long time people in different parts of the country slovenia france australia different parts uh, you know hire me over to uh help therapists learn how to run psychotherapy groups so i and i've always done that in many other trainings and my own training as well but you are completely right there are that type of style of training isn't around much do you think, it, and I, I kind of agree, you know, that it probably is cultural. We're very isolated, I think, now as as people. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We don't know half the time who lives next door to us. We don't want people to know our business. We're very selective over yeah. what we say and don't say in public with people. We have a, a facade, so to, you know, to break that down in a room with, you know, potentially seven other people, it's a big deal for some. It's huge. I mean, again, I was very fortunate because not only was I in my own group psychotherapy training, but then after that, I went into group training, if you like, or group experience with Richard Erskine, who would run five-day um, therapy intensives, where I would learn all these things on how to run groups from yeah. a personal and a professional position. You don't get that hardly anywhere else in psychotherapy group trainees now. So we are that's a big thing. Yeah. So you, you need to make sure if you are going to do it that you get the training and you get the appropriate training, like you say. Yeah, you and I I also think a group with other people that are doing group therapy yeah. is a good environment to be. <laughs> yeah, I also think you need to have experienced it yourself. Yes, yeah. So you've got a model. Yeah, and I did see the benefits of it. You know, like you said, to 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 get the therapy via osmosis or vicariously, and to not be emotionally involved in it, you can see a lot more of the process that's going on and be an observer, and that that's valuable. And I think that a real big advantage of individual therapy, especially for people who are highly disturbed. Is they get more time with the therapist. Yeah. They don't have to share the therapist. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think self exploration that can go on in an individual. Yeah. So uh, I think it's important to consider timings. Of, I, I had a lot of individual therapy before I went into a group. Um, and then way back later in my life, I went to retreats where I did a lot of personal group you know a lot of personal group, group group work going on with people for seven days for example and being around them and having communal 
eating eating times and meals and things like that so it's a, it was almost like a a process for me over time yeah as i went on um as to what you needed whether it was individual yeah, because when i started my yeah. last thing i would ever wanted to do was going to group yeah i needed the individual therapy first to do some of the healing to enable me to practice what i learned with more people yes yeah yeah absolutely but like you say there's pros and cons to everything do you, do you know what i mean some people will come for individual and stay with individual even if a group's offered to them um it's it's not for them and others want to go straight into a group yeah i think i think going straight into a group is something i would advise against me too i think, I think the person needs a relationship with the therapist so they they can be contained and held yeah. in a situation which might be be traumatizing or difficult for them because there's a whole process in the group in itself the forming and you know getting to know each other and the trust issues and was it forming storming and something else i don't know there's some storming. sort of psychological thing with that and yeah. you know if a new person comes in how it changes the dynamic or if somebody leaves that that can impact the whole group there's lots of stuff that goes on i give a lot of, i do a lot of work as a supervisor now with people running groups and i always say people are going to enact out their histories and their situations into groups so that the group becomes a mini family yeah yeah so when somebody you just think about that when somebody moves into their family situation moves out of their family situation those are huge dynamics yeah yeah and it sounds silly but loss and grief and abandonment and you know neg all that sort of stuff can go on in a group and when i ran a group people were in there three four five six years yeah yeah, I do think it's a good stepping stone going from individual to group. It's yeah. a very, very necessary one for the therapist to be able to assess and for the client to have that relationship, which is so trusting. Yeah. Yeah, me too. They're, they're, a, they're a completely different space to individual therapy. Oh, they're very, very different. Yeah. And there's accountability somehow when you're with a group. Well... You know, your first sentence about your experience as a group was about the first thing you mentioned on this podcast anyway, was bringing in a group you could hide more. Yeah. And I think you would hide more for safety. Yes. Uh, so therefore, you know, how a person feels safe and secure in a group is the important thing first. And you might have to, well, I, I would advise against this, sorry, for this, is see it as a process and have some time with your therapist first develop a bond there and then if you want to go into a group move on i think my issue was i've, I've always been a recovering people pleaser <laughs> so you know when the, the question was put so has anybody got anything they want to bring i would always let other people go first well i think the therapist Needs to... Taking up space for me is is the story that I've always played out, and I suppose I was allowed to play that out in a group. Well, I, I mean, I've got to stop. I've just realised time, but I've enjoyed talking about this. And perhaps we can have another podcast some other time talking about the pitfalls or group processes or something. It's it's brought me back many pleasant memories and many challenging memories. Absolutely. And if anybody can talk about this subject, it's you, Bob. You're an expert. So I'm, what we'll be talking about, this, yeah. say again. I am on this. running. You, group. Are you an expert on a lot of things, Bob? So the next episode is going to be, has COVID changed the face of psychotherapy? That's oh, going to be a good wow. one. That's a good one. That'll be really interesting. And just before we finish, um, it's the conference tomorrow. So anybody that's bought tickets. Have no, it's a... not tomorrow. It's a week. No, it's not. Oh, yes. Yes. This is, this is yeah. the seventh. Eight, nine, the ten. Yes. I lose track of all time because of various other things. I've kept, not long since I've come back off holiday. I've got but the you... conference. Then there's another holiday. And then I'm going to, oh, I've taught at Ljubljana. That was in groups, how to run a relational group. So a lot has happened. Yeah, you are right. But it's... you're going to be getting everything ready 
tomorrow for the big reveal. For the big occasion. Absolutely. So good luck with it all. And I hope anybody that's listening that's going has a, a wonderful time. Yes, yes, yes. It, it, it'd be absolutely wonderful. I mean, the last one, which is three years ago, was just before my heart surgery. Wow. So it will be a very healing experience for me personally. Yeah, to go back to the same place and do it all over again. Well, to go to, to go back to the same place, and what, and just before I had my triple bypass, it was just before that, and I was so tired on the Saturday afternoon i went to bed and i never do that and i want and this time around i'm going to have a completely different energy so i'm looking so much forward to that and and also the healing and a different experience in that sense yeah absolutely so i hope it all goes excitingly yeah. and very well for you and i'll find out all about it on the next podcast you will and so will other people by the sounds of it okie dokie have a wonderful time <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.